Hi, I'm Brian, service manager at Whole Latte Love, and today we're going to go over how to rebuild the taps for the steam and hot water on the Expo Bar lever and Brutus. You're using a Brutus here. This is the Brutus, Brutus 4R. But it'll be the same on a lever. Yes. Okay. And what do we need to do to get this done? All right. Well, let's start with what the tools are we need for this yeah. project. Uh, you're going to want a pick. Uh, I've found that the hook-shaped pick is the easiest for doing this when you actually have to remove the Teflon stopper from the back of the valve. So that's the part we're actually... That is the part that we will actually have to replace on this. Along with inspecting uh, a couple other things? Yes, yeah, so you inspect the cleanliness of this. Uh, a lot of times the actual issue with a valve leaking is build up on this. It's not necessarily that this is damaged, mm -hmm. but if you're going in there, it's a cheap part to replace, so you might as well just do it. Okay. Uh, but you can definitely, if you don't have the part, try just cleaning it. A lot of times that's the actual issue. Okay. Uh, there's also O-rings inside there that we're going to inspect and lubricate uh, that may need to be replaced, may not. Okay. And what else do we got? All right. Here? So we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, mm -hmm. a 19 millimeter wrench, which is going to go on to front nut here that actually holds all the innards in. Mm -hmm. And I like to have the second adjustable wrench just to help stabilize when I'm taking the other nut off. Just makes it a little bit easier. Otherwise, when you're turning this nut here, mm -hmm. you can turn the whole valve a little sideways and then you just gotta adjust and adjust and it's Real easier cool. to hold it stable the first time. All right, should we get into it? Let's get into it. Okay. All right. So we're going to start by opening the valve all the way. Okay. The reason we do that is just because the actual stem in here needs to be unthreaded to pull all the way out, and we have to take the handle off first. So might as well might as well do it so you don't have okay. to try and unthread it from just a little pin. Okay. All right. So we're going to take our. Phillips head screwdriver and take this screw out here. All right, that came out easy. Sometimes what you'll run into is this bushing in here is made of brass mm -hmm. and it can get worn out and kind of get hung up on the edge okay. in here. So if your machine is one that decides to do that, just take the heel of your screwdriver or your wrench or something and just give it a couple of taps on the side and they'll usually break it up enough that you can just end up wiggling it off. Okay. But this one cooperated, so okay. we'll take it. Set that to the side. Now, take our adjustable, hold it steady, and there we go. So you can see that little bit of play in there. And that's why I love using the wrench. All right, and it's going to have lubrication all over it. We're still going to need to thread it just a little bit more. And here we go. And let me just grab a rag real quick. Mm -hmm. Just want to wipe all the old grease off. You can see a lot of dark buildup in there. It's just the old grease mixed with a little bit of mineral deposit from the steam. Totally normal. What you're going to want to check for on the O-rings is to make sure there's no cracking. If you do the quick pinch test, just make sure it will fold up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you can check in that fold to make sure there's no cracking. These O-rings look good. So if you saw cracking, you'd want to replace those? Definitely. Okay. May last a little bit longer without it, but not too much. Mm -hmm. uh, I was almost going to lubricate it before doing the <laughs> next step. Okay. Get all the lube off first because you want to get a good grip on the stem for the next part. What we're going to do here is inspect first. This is the Teflon disc that you saw. As you can see, there's a bit of a nipple in the center now mm -hmm. from it being cranked down inside the valve. Uh, what can commonly happen is you'll get a little bit of buildup again from some of the mineral that can be inside of the 
steam vapor. Mm -hmm. It'll build up in there and just cause it not to seat properly. So a lot of times all you really need to do is clean it out, but we're gonna go ahead and replace it just because the ridging in that is really deep. So it's not long okay. for this world. Now, this is a fun one because you really gotta kinda fish this out. I like to use the rag, not just because I get better grip on it, yeah. but also it kinda protects my hand. From, so this might fly. A sharp can, instrument. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give yourself a quick little stab. Uh -huh. All right, so what you really want to do is get right into the ridge with the point, pop it down. You'll hear a little pop as it goes in there, and then flick out. Rarely do you get it on the first try. But the more you fish it in there, you'll get a deeper divot. More leverage on it. Yeah. I think my pick is unhappy right now. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be in the same shape it just was a minute ago. There we, yeah, go. There we go. Boom. Free. And it's gone. Okay. Now, once you have that out, it's a good idea just to look around inside the edge. Make sure that you don't have any cracks. Mm -hmm. and this one looks clean. If this was cracking on the inside, the entire edge of this is just going to start to corrode and it won't seal right and you'll wind up with little pieces of metal and stuff that'll get stuck on the stopper. Okay. So if you did see significant damage on the edge of this, you would you want to replace the whole thing. Okay. So we'll just take the new stopper and I'm gonna have to line it up. Sometimes you can get them to pop right in Sometimes they will fight you a little bit. This one's gonna fight me a little bit. So the handle was friendly, but the tap will be difficult. So what we're gonna do mm -hmm. is take the tap and seat it right over it. And get as right on top as you can, and then take a little hammer, dead blow, use my wrench. Keep it as straight as you can. And then she went. And there she goes. Okay. Now, take our lubricant. Reuse up those O rings. You want to get a little bit in the threads too. To keep it from squeaking when you're opening and closing the valve. Okay. And. Clean off the threads out here. You also want to take a look inside. Make sure you don't see any horrible buildup or anything in there. Uh, if you did see some buildup in there, you could just use something small like a Q-tip or something just to scrub around Quite in there and up. clean it out. But this one's pretty clean, so okay. you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So now, just take stem, roll it back in. A little tricky because it's slimy right now, but I like to just roll it in and out a couple of times and take a listen. Make sure you don't hear any squeaking or anything. If you do, just pull it back out and put a little bit more lube on there. But that should be good. And then same up here. Just a quick little clean out of your threads. Make sure everything slides in real nice. Put it back on. And wrench back up here, keep everything stable. And tighten it till it's snug. Don't have mm -hmm. to over tighten it. Those O-rings are in there to keep everything watertight. Okay, so making so, it tighter isn't gonna affect. Right, yeah. If you ever had a leak, leak from right up here, mm -hmm. it's gonna be because of those O-rings, not because of this cap. Okay. Okay, and then just start off like that, so you don't have to fish around with it once it's actually on there. Slide it up. And then tighten it down. Now that it's tight, roll it back in and out a couple times. And you are all set. And it's the same procedure on the other side, right? Exactly the same on both sides, yes sir.
All right, Brian, thanks so much. Thank you. Want to learn more? Subscribe now so you'll know about the latest videos on everything coffee from Whole Latte Love.